be cool. I saw this little video of Virgil DJing at Circo Loco, and he's as I've written here that he's stepping up the levels of production. Or just a level of a kind of showmanship. And again, it's something that I will reserve judgment on. It's something that I'm speaking about myself. I'm sure other people might disagree. But looking at what looking at what Virgil's doing is DJ in life and looking how fast that's progressing, it's kind of marrying up it's kind of marrying up slightly with the levels that he's reaching in terms of fashion and design. His kind of influence is kind of far reaching. So much so that there's a story I saw recently a hype piece about off white suing a particular company for essentially, you know, copying or, re, uh, you know, basically copying a bracelet they, they did, but uh, putting other words in the quotation marks and the kind of, you know, the dicey ground that they're on there. But it's, it's, it, you, sort of, you can't not admit that, you know, he has his influence on Sinus surpassed um, streetwear or fashion, right? He's kind of um, permeated um, the, the general zeitgeist or the zeitgeist in general, the general consciousness uh the awareness people have of design is kind of you know it's kind of largely being steered by the stuff that he's doing or he's kind of participating in that overall wave that's going on and the levels are kind of i you know they're stepping up bit by bit and i've kind of mentioned previously as well that i've been a bit um i've been a bit annoyed a little bit let down a little bit disappointed with the levels of production when it comes to dj shows lately um the only thing that really caught me aghast that really got me like thinking wow it left me kind of awe inspired it left me really motivated to go back home and start mixing was the show that i went to recently where i Saw Nina Kravitz play at the Crank Brothers presents uh, Retextured at their little um, you know um, multi venue festival they did they did a few weeks ago, and I went to the Wolverhampton Assembly Hall and you know Crank Brothers put on an amazing production. Um, they really utilized you know they really kind of um, utilized Nina Kravitz in the right way. You know if you're familiar with Nina Kravitz, she's an extremely popular techno DJ hailing from Russia, but she has this way of contorting her body behind the decks and moving around and you know really being in the moment and kind of letting the music take on take over her kind of this kind of spiritual exorcism happens behind the decks and they did they, re they really made they really made it come to life by having it a massive projection screen behind her uh led screen i think for the most part uh, displaying different images different words it would black out a bit there weren't any lights directly overhead on Nina Kravitz so she was essentially a, a dark silhouette behind the DJ booth it was a massive black box kind of not a not a sheet just a massive black box completely covered nothing else shining just the lights from the CDJs and the screen from the back behind her so at moments what you could see was a silhouette and the lighting was kind of matching up with it so just incredible production incredible production really made me think wow this is awesome no one behind her too no groupie standing behind trying to you know get involved and try and act like they're part of the show all the groupies have to sit stand by the side of the show all her friends have to stand by the side of the show too so a really good level of production but i think for the most part places i've been to have been quite a let down right it's been just been a guy sit standing on a table playing music there's no real there's no real um, attention to detail went into the actual production of the actual event itself no real interior design no nothing nothing right just you know good sound system and dj which is probably what you need which is probably the bare minimum you need right but i think as um, the popularity of electronic music gets bigger and bigger and you have be you have uh, more and more fans coming in, more new people coming in. Um, the budgets get bigger, the venues get bigger, promoters want to take more chances. I think they should take more chances with their bookings and with the productions that they put on. You need to go a little bit further. And more importantly, the DJs too need to bring it. You need to kind of come in there and fucking go, go for it full tilt. And I've been following a lot of these big DJs online. I'm always kind of crate digging with their local, with their recent performances. I do the same thing most kind of, you know, aspiring DJs do where you follow a few DJs, um, you find out where they're playing on Resident Advisor, you maybe go on YouTube and find if you can find clips of them playing, see if somebody uh, uploaded a tune ID that you can maybe uh, add on to your crate. You might go into Instagram and find out where they're playing location-wise and see if there's people uploaded there. Same sort of process we all do, yeah? Go on Discogs, go on Beatport, dig, 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 dig. But I think a lot of DJs, for the most part, were kind of, you know, taking their foot off the gas and not being, you know, not bringing it, not bringing it again. I think with someone like Virgil coming in from the outside in, you know, he comes from the fashion streetwear back. And even though he's been DJing for a long time, I think his perspective has, is going to greatly affect and be uh, a more net, I think it's going to be a net positive for DJs and the electronic scene going on all over, right? Um, all around, sorry, uh, for the future coming. Um, number one, the Coachella set looked amazing, right? He did that massive screen in collaboration with Futura, um, the Time Flies thing, where supposedly he's going to take that on tour, which will be quite cool as well to see him kind of basically touring the world as a DJ act, maybe having other supporting DJs play with him, maybe having... Um, certain artists come out on stage and play with him too that would be awesome as well 
Um, so I think that level of production, having a massive screen, collaborating with an artist, then projecting images on the screen, something that we might see kind of iterated down with other artists too, other DJs. The other thing I thought would be quite interesting is the idea of the table and how he laid out the actual DJ deck table itself. It was very bare, very minimal, just a massive black table, long legs with nothing else on the on the on the table, no other distractions, no other gizmos, just a big table and him playing on the decks, kind of similar to that legendary uh, Jeff Mills video where he's kind of you know showing you how he mixes and puts tunes together the wizard i think i forgot what the video is called but i'm watching it ages ago where it's called so i've got a camera zooming down a camera in front and it's essentially just him sitting on top of a black of a black table and just fucking you know smashing it to pieces uh the next thing as well is the fact that he had a bespoke or like a limited edition uh made to order a custom pair of uh cdjs and a dj am mixer made for him and they're made completely see-through i think i've shown you a picture of them previously um he's got a completely see-through deck and a completely see-through mixer um, by pioneer that just sits there and the lights you know they're glowing the the jog wheels are made um the but the knobs are different color too i think they're like orange but the actual body of the thing is just completely clear translucent so you can see the actual inside of a cj which we never get to see so that's quite cool so i think we're going to see that get iterated more um the use of gloves he's using his um louis vuitton uh construction worker kind of gloves when he's djing on um when he's when, he, when he's at djing so then of course when when photographers come photographers are taking the you know the famous pictures of djs you know fucking around in the mix or whatever usually um the kind of you know the the set the kind of the selling point that way was the concentration on dj's face or the maybe the finger tattoos or maybe the great frog silver rings but nowadays imagine kind of it going forward and it being an idea of like you know adorning your hands with some kind of gloves maybe a promotion maybe a collaboration that you've done that would be quite a cool way to do it maybe you know maybe the maybe they're not gonna be the most comfortable thing to wear in a nightclub in a sweaty nightclub but that might be a good way to go about things and then i think the other thing i wanted to mention was the merch right he's kind of really gone he's he's kind of re just really gone the extra step with his merch in terms of his djing stuff not only is he having not only is he wearing custom made t-shirts that he makes himself um he's also making uh workwear jackets right in terms of like you know the idea is like you know the DJ that that he's DJing, but it's also work, right? He's going, he's turning up for work. This is kind of the you know the DJ construction crew. They're, they're designing sounds. They're providing a soundscape. So he's got this amazing kind of short jacket that he wore, a work jacket. I don't know what you'd call that jacket that he wore at Coachella. That was really cool. And he's got the same thing that he wore here, Circo Loco. So I think these little tidbits, these little um, bits of pe bits and pieces that he's adding into his DJ Arsenal, apart from the music that is already good and it's already getting to a good level i think just being surrounded by that level of people of djs you're obviously going to absorb a lot from them you're going to learn a lot and your levels are going to step up but i think those other things added on you're going to see get iterated with other djs because for the most part the people that really take a real concentrate aim on their production and what they do on the actual show is maybe the top 10 you know the david get no the david getter the sven bars all those kind of people the ones that are getting paid the, the big big bucks they go above and beyond with their production because i guess you know for the most part they kind of have to the, the the audience that comes to those kind of shows pays a lot of money for the tickets they get a lot of money they usually play in spaces that allow them freedom to kind of maybe you know go a bit crazy with the sound system maybe go a bit crazy with the with the drinks menu maybe go a bit crazy with the sound design maybe go a bit crazy with the lighting but i guess the lower the dj and the less money they're getting the less likely they're able or willing to kind of invest money into kind of getting the show where it should be level wise but i think overall in the long run term we're going to see a, a bit of a culture shift in terms of how these shows are put on anyway enough talking about me um look at the pictures so this is some pictures of virgil uploaded from him at circo loco in milan it looks fucking awesome so here he's, he's wearing a jacket or a t-shirt or a t-shirt that's uh, with free m on the back with a free m print that says amnesia scanner which is super cool you see him, the Seth, um, Virgil, Virgil next next to Seth Troxler again, another DJ who was very big on a showmanship. Somebody that kind of essentially, essentially, his um his DJing career was uh boosted or kind of you know hit the heady heights based on some of the quirky and kind of you know no holds barred interview that he gave over the years. He's kind of reined in a little bit more. He doesn't necessarily talk as much as he did previously, maybe because you know he's a lot more mature now. He's probably said all he needs to say. He's a different space. Uh, but he's also another DJ too that I think would probably benefit a lot from having that uh, virtual energy next to him because he's, I'm sure some of the uh, stuff has got loads of ideas of how he could uh, boost his shirt. I could get it um, looking better, produced better. And I'm sure with the live project he's doing now, is it the lost child of whatever it's called Saturn? I think whatever he's doing at the moment now, um, that's something that you could easily kind of, you know, um, uh, roll into that. Um, you've got another image here coming up. Oh, yeah. And this is the Zoom image of DJ, of Virgil DJing on those clear see-through decks. Like, 
you can't tell me that's not cool, man. How cool does that fucking look? I can't wait until these come out. I don't know when they're going to come out, if they ever do come out, but they look fucking incredible. Again, it might be a limited edition thing, like similar to the... Because I, I don't know how many people actually bought the all-white CDJs. I didn't like them personally. I don't sure if you guys like them yourself. I didn't really like the all-white CDJs. I thought they looked a bit shit. I think these look fucking awesome and such a cool way to promote... Um, an item with uh, Pioneer, which I'm sure he collaborated directly with Pioneer because it ties in essentially to the stuff that he's doing already with, um, what's the suitcase company did it with? Anyway, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. It ties in completely with doing the suitcase company. It's got the same sort of design codes as the Nike collaboration that he done earlier, you know, kind of unearthing or, you know, exposing the inner details, uh, tweaking the design by 3% and then kind of, you know, getting what you're getting now on screen. And I think these will sell out. I honestly do think these will sell out because, again, I wasn't a fan of the whites. I don't think any DJ, for the most part, what worth their skin really wants a pair of white decks really it's not really the best thing it probably not isn't the most um, aesthetically pleasing especially for the most part most dj equipment is black or of a silver kind of base to it maybe gray if there's any kind of color in it so getting all white decks is not the best best thing but i think see-through i think a whole line of this i think if virgil was if if if, if he was if he was able to and pioneer or willing to i think where they could actually kill it with this collaboration is if they did an entire kit Right, you know how he's doing with IKEA. He's kind of promoting this idea that he wants kids to be able to afford, you know, really well designed and well considered um, interior design furniture pieces, right, for a fraction of the price. So somebody like a Virgil being able to collaborate with IKEA, it basically democratizes, um, you know, uh, furniture for the regular kid out there. I'm sure the resale price would be crazy, but for the most part, you can get a piece of Virgil for I don't know, maybe for thirty pound upwards. What would be really cool is that if they could somehow um, get together with Pioneer and design a whole entire kit from maybe the bottom or maybe the middle all the way up into the top. So essentially you could design um, a DJ controller. I'm not sure what DJ controller it would be, but one of the DJ controllers in the Pioneer lineup and get that to be completely see-through. And then maybe um, the ones above, just above that, maybe the, the RX2 could be see-through too. Maybe some speakers that they make could be see-through. Maybe some headphones that they make could be see-through. Like an entire kit, some studio monitors. That would look insane. I think that would look amazing in the studio, like having that just look at you. And I think, you know what it actually reminds me of? It reminds me of that old school iMac. Do you remember the iMac from 2010? No, 2010. I think it was 2001. The iMac with the, with the massive translucent uh, um, shell at the back of it, different colors, like blue, purple, green. I think that kind of got the codes of that in it. But yeah, that looks fucking amazing. So again, um, I think we're going to see a little bit more of Advent. And don't be surprised if you see a lot more DJs going to merch. Like again, Virgil's wearing an orange long sleeve t-shirt he designed himself with Amnesia scan at the back. I think that's, again, another kind of, another showcase of just how different um, his approach is in terms of all black, Rick Owens, you know, Julius kind of look. You're going to maybe see a bit of a shift coming towards it. And even, even if they still do the off the kind of Rick Owens um, all black look, at least do a collaboration with him. That'll make it a little more interesting. But again, regardless, I think it's really cool to see um, again, um, the televised radio uh, chore jacket that uh, Virgil wore during his Coachella set and again, the MD is kind of shirt there. So again, we're seeing a lot, a, a different, a different side to Virgil playing these DJ sets with these kind of people. Again, maybe it's a, he's pivoting in on purpose um, towards this kind of scene and really getting into the electronic techno house scene and really kind of, you know, positioning himself as a really um, well-known and established DJ there. But I think as a promoter as well, you can't complain if you're a DJ. Oh, he's taking people's slots. I think as a promoter, it's a no-brainer. You get Virgil, who's kind of, you know, a name that's going to sell itself, plus everyone else on the list. So imagine you you got Virgil, you got Martinez Brothers, you've got Seth Truxler, you've got Massio Plex, all these big names playing, plus you've got a Virgil Avalo playing. It's, it's no-brainer that uh, a, a promoter would want to get him on the on the books and of course i think like most things like um comedy you get given you get given a bit of a bly right you get maybe given the benefit of the doubt if you're not good you can get to play but i think you know after the second third time if you're not good people will know and they'll just stop booking you because it probably does their brand more more damage than good so i think the fact that he's getting booked so often maybe shows that you know um at the moment he's at the level that really does warrant getting books at these kind of venues um there's a couple of videos here too as well that show some of the stuff that he was doing Maybe quickly check that. But honestly, I think it's cool, man. I think it's cool to see. We're actually seeing a different side. Maybe it's going to... Again, I'm, I'm I'm happy to see more scene leaders maybe take this kind of route going forward. Again, those, oh, those clear-through, see-through decks look so fucking impressive, don't they? It looks so good. So, so good. They'll be worth big bucks, though, of course, but I can't wait to see um, them out and available for everyone to purchase.